Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of Before the Bell. Yes, it's that time of the week again. I know you guys are excited. I know you've been chomping at the bit all week, but it's finally here. You don't have to wait anymore. It's all right. No more staying wide awake all night, you know, cold sweats, waiting for this day. It's finally here. You can relax. Um, there's a lot to cover. Um, obviously, Punk being on Cabana's podcast, you know, Vince being on Steve Austin's podcast. There's a lot to cover this week. There are a few rumors in between that I'll try to get to. Um, I want to try to keep this 45 minutes. I know I have a habit of going over the time limit. Um, you know, but when you get your own show, you can do that if you want. And I don't really care. Um, I try to keep it 45 minutes, but, you know, I think last podcast that I did went maybe an hour. Um, so bear with me. If it goes over, it goes over. But you know, I try to keep it 45 minutes because I don't want you guys falling asleep um, halfway through. So with that being said, as I always say, sit back, relax, throw those headphones in. Let me entertain you for 45 minutes, give or take. It's always give or take with me. Um, if you know this show and you know what I do, then you know it's always take. Um, I say 45 minutes, and I could hear the collective bullshit chant going off um, when I said that. But I hope, I hope maybe I can get to 45 minutes if I can stay on topic, um, because like I said, there's a lot to cover. Um, but with that being said, this is Before the Bell, episode number 12. As always, I am your host, Matt Donato. Let's not mince words. Let's not bullshit. Let's get right into this bad boy, and we're going to start with uh, CM Punk's podcast, and you're probably asking yourself, why are we starting with Punk's podcast? And that's a good question, and I'll tell you why, um, because that's the first thing written down on the uh, piece of paper sitting in front of me, and this is my podcast, and uh, I can do whatever the hell I want. So, that is really why. There's no rhyme or reason, um, and if you don't like that, well, it's too damn bad. Um, in all seriousness, let's get right into it. CM Punk makes a lot of controversial statements um, about the WWE, gives his side of the story um, about his departure, his leaving, um, and obviously, you know, still a lot of backlash from the IWC, from, you know, from the group of people who, you know, I said this last week, Here, here's, this, this is really what it is, people tend to these are the people who tend to follow what everybody else is doing. They tend to follow the most popular um, opinion. So when Punk was in his prime and people loved him, these people loved Punk too. Now Punk is talking all this garbage. He left the WWE, left all of his fans behind. He walked out. Everybody hates him. Now these people hate him too. That's really what it is. They're followers, they're posers. Aussie likes to call them the WWE hipsters. I don't necessarily disagree with that. That's a good point. Um, but I, uh, I here's here's my thing, and, and this is another thing I said last week. Think of it this way. To me, th this is my issue with it, and this is why I think that it's absolutely bullshit that people are getting upset with him for leaving a company he wasn't comfortable with. Here's why. So listen very, very, very closely, because if you're one of those people that hate on Punk because he, quote, walked out on the WWE and walked out on his fans, here's what I have to say to you. So listen very carefully, because I'm speaking directly to you. You listening? Good. It's none of your goddamn business. Get that through your fucking head. It's not your goddamn business. If you worked at a department store, say you worked at Walmart, I don't know why you would want to work at Walmart. I mean, Walmart is just fucking weird. Um, and if you're, I don't, do you have Walmarts overseas? If anybody's listening to this and, and you're from the UK or, or around that area, and uh, let me know. I don't think there are Walmarts there, but who the fuck? Walmart's everywhere. That place just sprouts up out of, I swear to God, I thought they were saying that they were going to go out of business. I thought I read that somewhere, that they were going out of business, and then you turn around, there's five of them in one parking lot. They all sell the same shit. It's garbage. You go and you buy it, it breaks in one day. I don't understand. I don't get how they're still around. It makes no, like, the quality of the stuff that they sell is terrible. 
How are they still around? I don't know. Man. I'm telling you right now. You will not get this on the Sharpshooter or React. You won't get this on any other wrestling podcast. You come here to listen to wrestling. And you hear me uh, talking garbage about about Walmart. I, I you're, you're not going to get that kind of quality entertainment anywhere else. I promise you. Um, but that's enough about my uh, vendetta against Walmart. But say you work at Walmart, you work at Target or Costco or whatever the equivalent is in the UK, um, parts of Ireland, Asia, places like that. Um, and you're the best damn cashier ever. And everybody knows your name. Everybody loves you there. But the company you're working for is treating you like garbage. And you decide, you know what? I'm done with this. I can't take it any longer. And you quit. Would it make sense for the customers to be pissed off at you? No. It it just, it's, and you know why it wouldn't make any sense? And again, I'm speaking to those who are bashing CM Punk for leaving the company. Because it's none of your goddamn business. I cannot say that any clearer. It is not your concern. What he does in his life is not your concern. If he wants to leave a company that he feels is treating him unfairly, it's completely his choice. And for those to bitch and complain and whine, he's walking out on us. No, he did what had to be done. And to make it perfectly clear, he didn't walk out. He left to clear his head, had a wedding with his wife, and they fired him on his wedding day. So why aren't people pissed off at the WWE for doing this? Why are people so pissed off at Punk? You know, I maybe it's because it's easier to visualize. Maybe because he's, you know, it's easy to dislike him because he can be kind of angry, agitated. I guess that's a good word for it. Sometimes, I guess. I mean, he'll say it himself. He said it multiple times. He's an asshole. That's what he says. He says it himself. I respect him for that. That's honest. And, and you know, it's that kind of honesty. If somebody can call themselves an asshole and say, yeah, you know what? I am a jerk. You know, I probably did rub that guy the wrong way. I was having, I'm having a bad day. If somebody can be that honest, that is what leads me to believe that, that everything he said on that podcast, you know, may, maybe, you know, historically inaccurate, But to him, what he was saying was 100% real to him. That's how he felt at the time. That's what in his mind he recollects as being the God's honest truth. I don't think he was lying. I don't think he was telling stories. And for another thing, when he was telling his stories, it wasn't like he was telling it, you know, without any interruptions. It wasn't like he was telling it like he memorized the stories, like he had it written down in front of him. He was telling the stories as if he was truly trying to recollect them. He kept pausing, taking times to reflect and think about what happened before he said anything. And to for me, that bodes well to the fact that he was telling the truth. And quite frankly, I can't see why he would lie about what he said. And, you know, the fact of the matter about him being fired on his wedding day. And then, you know, Vince on, on Steve Austin's podcast, you know, issuing an apology. And then claiming he didn't know anything about it. That right there tells me it's bullshit. That completely... You know, that, that completely makes, you know, his apology lose all validity. Because you come out and you claim that you knew nothing about it. This is your company. You don't tell me you know nothing about it. Especially when you're giving AJ Lee time off to go marry him. You need to know the time frame when she's going to be back. So you know she's going to get married. You know she's getting married to him. Therefore, you know when her wedding day is. So don't try to bullshit and say you didn't know. Or that so-and-so didn't tell so-and-so. No, that's a bunch of garbage. It was, it, it, it was, you know, it was express shipped to be specifically sent on his wedding day. You know, the sent date was the 14th, the day before his wedding. And they, they, they shipped it out express to get him, get it to him that very next day on his wedding. So it, it was all signs point to it was purposefully done. Does that mean Punk didn't do anything to provoke it? No. Like Punk says, he's an asshole. Maybe he said something stupid. Maybe, you know, maybe he made some rude comment or talked about, I want my royalty checks. Who knows what he said? 
But the fact still remains that it was very childish on the part of the WWE to do that. Uncalled for and unnecessary. And I don't care what Punk did. It's time for WWE to step up, be the bigger man and say, you know what? You know, I don't care what he said. He was angry and disgruntled. You know, it's their fault he was put in that position in the first place. You know, so I honestly have to be more on the side of Punk right now. And, you know, I'm honestly not surprised about all the things that he said. You know, I, I guess I was shocked, like you guys were. I, I, was, I was more shocked at the fact that, you know, I guess as a fan, I was kind of naive in thinking that the WWE has changed from what they were um, in the Attitude Era because, you know, the Attitude Era, they're very, very nonchalant, very, I'm, I'm going to go, you know, for lack of a better word, lazy. Um... And, you know, there was a lot of things going on with steroids and, you know, lack of medical attention, concussions happening all the time. Um, and for me, you know, I guess as a fan, I was kind of in my own little world. They really did a great job of wrapping this bubble around the WWE to make it look like this perfect little community, you know, where everybody was treated. And it was such a, a much better environment to work in. And then you hear these stories, and while at the same time I'm not shocked to hear it, I am shocked because I'm, you know, I'm still that I'm still naive as a fan. I want to believe they're at a better place, you know. But as he says these things, I'm really not shocked because at the end of the day, it's still a ruthless business. Vince is still a ruthless businessman. Nothing more, nothing less. That's what he does. It didn't become a multi-billion-dollar business because Vince was nice. You know, he destroyed every single um, promotion out there, every single territory that his father, you know, promised to keep protected, Vince destroyed. You know, he monopolized, he took everything, and, you know, he threw it into his own company, and it became his multi-billion dollar company. It didn't happen overnight, and it didn't happen, you know, by him shaking hands and being nice. It happened, you know, by him being ruthless. So it is expected, and it, and it isn't that big of a shock because knowing how the WWE is, knowing how they used to treat their employees, and, and like I said, like that it's a business, I guess I'm not too shocked. Um, you know, what really stuck with me, and I know it stuck with Alec, and I know it stuck with uh, Aussie, is the fact that... Um, the, the the medical attention that they get isn't as quality as I had, I guess, naively thought it was. Again, hoping that they had changed their ways and that they had really gotten more attentive to their to their performers, to their wrestlers, um, because this is a dangerous sport. You know, when you have a huge lump on your back, yeah, you really should get that checked out. Yeah, it could be you know, fluid building up, it could be this, it could be that, it could be cancerous, you don't know. So you're going to risk it just because you want to make money? I mean, I understand greed, that's one thing, but that just takes, that's just somebody's life you're dealing with here. You can't just do this stuff. You know, all the, the concussions that went on check, you know, this is the same thing that, that the WWE prides themselves on because of Chris Benoit. Or as... You know, some of you know him, vacant. Um, but, ser you know, getting serious again, you know, there's a lot of speculation that he did what he did because of the concussions, or that was a leading factor. And, you know, in the NFL, there, you know, there's a lot of testing saying the same things. These concussions are doing a lot of damage. And it makes sense. You know, your brain sloshes around in your head enough, you're probably going to cause some mental problems. I mean, it just makes sense. And the fact that he had multiple, multiple concussions that were left untreated because they wanted to push him, you know, to do this tour, do that tour, do this match, do this. We need you here. We need you there, buddy. That's not That's not cool. It's dangerous and um, really proves that they really haven't, you know, they, they put on this facade that they're, that they're really attentive to their wrestlers. They really make, but they're honestly, you know, they're not. I mean, Punk had a staph infection that went unnoticed, found out from another, from a second opinion from a doctor that it was MRSA, 
and they were just going to pass him on. They didn't even want to check him. He asked for help, and they wouldn't give it to him. I mean, that's, that's just ridiculous. He had to get a second opinion. When you work for a company like the WWE, where you go in and you get banged up on a daily basis and you're promised a doctor, and you have to go elsewhere because the doctor that they gave to you is not doing their job, yeah, I don't blame Punk for walking out. That's a dangerous situation. I don't care what they're paying you. And to be quite frankly, from as, as Punk is saying, it's not you know nearly enough for what you know, the the abuse that he was taking. I don't blame him for walking out one bit. I believe Punk's side of the story. I believe Punk, or I believe uh, Vince's, you know, side of the story is complete bullshit. He's trying to save face. And, uh, you know, his apology, you know, about Punk getting, you know, his pink slip on his wedding. You know, not only did it lose validity when, you know, when he claimed he didn't know anything about it, but it lost validity, you know, because as Punk put it, you know, Punk issued a statement, you know, of course he's going to apologize when there's cameras around. He wants the publicity, and that's the fact. The WWE is a business, and Vince has always been a businessman. I didn't believe his apology for one second because he just, he just wants to look good. Vince is the bigger man. You know, he's man enough to apologize. He knows he was bullshit. Vince just wants the publicity. You think you think the WWE and Vince give a shit about uh, be a star? You think they care about that anti-bully garbage? No. And I'm not saying garbage as far as, far as that's what I believe. Um, I don't think you should bully. I think bullying is stupid. But um, you know, I'm I think that's the way that they look at it. All oh, this anti-bullying garbage—they just do it to save face. They want to look good in the public eye because they've had such a a tainted, um, people have such a tainted perception of pro wrestling, and it's sad, but WWE kind of did that to themselves, when you have freaking, um, I'm trying to remember who it was, oh my god, I'm drawing a blank here, guys, you're gonna have to help me out, write this in the comment section, but, uh, who was it that, that supposedly had sex with the dead corpse, I want to say it was Kane, but I could be completely wrong. Maybe it was Big Show. No, I think it was Kane. I want to say it was Kane. Why am I not remembering this? All right, that's it. That's enough of that. Um, right in the middle of this podcast, I'm gonna look it up because this is this is killing me. I I I gotta know. I know it was Katie Vick, but I gotta figure out. I th- I want to say it was Kane. And you're probably sitting there going, yeah, it was Kane. Yeah, yep, it was Kane. Yep, the Katie Vick storyline. When you when you fucking have a storyline like that, yeah, okay. Of course, of course people are going to have a uh, tainted perception of your industry. Now you're trying to change that perception? Why? After all these years of building that, then you're just going to, oh, we need to change it because they want more publicity, they want more money. And it's just ridiculous to me. Instead of saying, instead of instead of looking at it as, hmm, if we make our company better and we make it more entertaining for our fans, and we give them what they want, they'll start coming to more shows, we'll start making more money, and everybody will be happy. They're completely ignoring the fans, and they're trying to bring on new ones. And I say this all the time, but they don't seem to get this concept. If the fans... If, if they weren't a fan of your product before, I promise you they're not going to be a fan now. Nobody just one day wakes up out of a dead sleep and says, I think I'll be a wrestling fan. That doesn't happen. That's never going to happen. And it's a ridiculous dream. It's just stupid. But the fact that this company has gotten, or it hasn't gotten any better, it's, it's just so greedy. And to be honest, you know, like I said, it, it's, it, this should be expected. I mean, I don't know why I expected any less out of them, but I believe Punk's story. I believe that he's being legitimate. And, you know, another thing he talked about um, was Ryback. And uh, funny thing, first of all, he's, he, he claims that Ryback, and this is, this is definitely true, whether it was intentional or not, um, 
you know, has injured multiple, multiple people. He has a habit of injuring people because, you know, he's not very good. Well, we're going to put it simply like that. He's not very good. I don't blame him. He tries. I, I like the guy. You can't help but like the guy. I personally like him. I'll give you my reasoning why. Uh, maybe we can do that too in the comment section. Why do you like or dislike Ryback? What is it about him that you don't like or what is it about him that you like? I actually like Ryback. And I'll give you my reasoning behind why I like him. Um, because in interviews outside of wrestling, in um, the way that he speaks about the business, he is absolutely passionate about about the sport of professional wrestling. In my book, that will win you over with me in a heartbeat. If you truly love this business for what it is, and he's a fan of this business, that's what I love about him. So I would love to see him succeed. But right now, I don't see that happening. He's not very good in the ring. He's just big. That's it. Punk calls him out on the podcast and says, you know, he intentionally, you know, he had injured him multiple times. He had worked with him, blah, blah, blah. One scene in particular that seemed to be sticking out in everybody's mind, mind, mind included, um, was the table incident. And if you haven't seen it yet, obviously go YouTube it. Um, this is when he was feuding with Ryback when Ryback had Heyman as his manager. Punk is on the stage and Ryback gorilla presses him off the stage and through the table, except he doesn't go through the table. He pretty much misses the table, only hits his arm to the table, and the rest of him slaps hard onto the concrete floor. And um, I believe this was directly after an injury that happened a few weeks prior where Ryback kicked Punk in the ribs, breaking one of his ribs. Punk obviously being pissed off. You know, they talked to him about it. They had some issues about it, but they gave this was a clean slate. I'll work with Ryback again. And Punk very vocal about not wanting to work with Ryback. Wanting to actually work with Curtis Axel because he thought he had more talent. And I completely 120,000%. That was a big number, random number. I don't even think that percentage even makes sense. But just so you know, I completely agree with Punk. I've always liked Curtis Axel. I know. A lot of people don't like him because he's boring, but his in-ring work is so good. I know there's a lot of people who, do, who I've heard and talked to people and read about people who think that his wrestling sucks. I don't understand that. To me, his wrestling is top-notch, some of the best in the business. His transitions are seamless. They are so great, and he has so much ability it's just ridiculous to me that they're not doing anything with him. That he's just left out. He's so talented. Well, I don't. Well, I don't know why he's you know not doing anything, huh? Well, you start off his career giving him the name Michael fucking McGillicuddy. Yeah, I don't think anybody could survive with that match. I don't think the Rock or Stone Cold Steve Austin could make it big with the name Michael McGillicuddy. Seriously, you're giving that guy that name. It's almost like you're saying we want him to fail. I mean, I, I don't understand who even thought that name was good. Probably the same asshole who thought Brian Peacock for Daniel Bryan would have been a good name. Really? You've got to be kidding me. I, um... I don't know. I, it's just... I, I find CM Punk's story to be truthful. Like I said, the way that he presented his story, it wasn't straightforward. It wasn't, you know, rehearsed. It didn't come off rehearsed. So that leads me to believe he's telling the truth. And I've seen Ryback injured, and you can actually go back and watch a video of him, Gorilla pe pressing him off the stage onto the concrete accidentally. And, you know, I don't know how difficult that move is, but I've seen many people do it and do it accurately. Um, and then, you know, Punk says he goes backstage after that incident and asks him, did you do that on purpose or are you just dumb as fuck? And um, I think this is, you know, the one comment he made that everybody is talking about. And Ryback pretty much replies and Punk does an amazing impression. He replies, I'm just dumb as fuck. And uh, 
I don't know why anybody would make that up. It just doesn't make sense to me. Why would you make up that? St- it just doesn't sound like something that would be made up. Um, wh- who benefits from that? Why does he benefit from hurting Ryback? Yeah, he's pissed off, but he doesn't benefit from it. Um, but I want to point this out. And uh, I don't know how many people have seen this yet, but Ryback made some comments about it. Defending himself. Claiming that those things were untrue. And um, it hurts him. It hurts him a lot. That he would say these things to Vince McMahon behind his back. Um, yeah, I have issue with that. Because, you know, see, Ryback seemed really, really... Uh, of course you're going to come and defend yourself. Those are untrue. I'm not dumb as fuck. I never said those things. Of course you're going to defend yourself when you're attacked. But what I don't like is if you read further down in his statement, he says, you know, I put him over multiple times. Uh, what? I, somebody explain that to me. Where, where did it go wrong where Ryback got it into his mind? That he put CM Punk over ever. I I just... I don't understand where he would... In his mind come up with that. Because to me it doesn't... It doesn't make... It doesn't make any sense. And uh, I'm trying to find the uh, little excerpt for you right now so I can read it. Um, he goes on, he says, I wish him the best, and I'd like to think he would be thankful for everything that he has in WWE. I was the one that, for lack of a better word, put him over time and time again. And then he walked out and left. Um, you never put him over. Let me, let me, let me make something perfectly clear. I like you. I like you, buddy. I, I really do. But, um... You never put Punk over. Punk was over way before you even got there. So I don't understand where you got it in your head that Punk was over or was put over by you. You know, John Cena beat, or he beat John Cena at Money in the Bank for the WWE Championship. So you're putting yourself in that same category? Dude, you're not even close. I don't understand where in your mind you think you're that great. Just because you have backing from Vince McMahon, you put him over multiple, multiple times. You keep telling yourself that, bud. Whatever you say. To me, that makes no sense. I don't understand where he comes off thinking he put... Well, I put him over time and time again. No, you had a couple matches with him. And he really didn't. He was already over. Um, I know he said lack of a better word, but you said put him over, which you didn't do. You wrestled him and he beat you. I mean... Not really putting him over. If you were a bigger main event star, then yes, I would agree with you. You put him over, but you're not. You're a mid card. A main eventer beats a mid carder. That's not really a big thing. Why you would bring that up like it was some miraculous? I put him over time and time again. Like he's supposed to be super thankful for that. Yes. I bet if that you know. I mean, I guess in a small sense you put him over, but it's not a big accomplishment. It's not something to brag about. You know, the fact that you, it's actually more the other way. You, I think you, as as I'm, like I'm talking to Ryback, like he's going to be listening to this podcast. He's listening right now going, You're dumb as fuck. As he's fucking like eating a sandwich and curling a thousand pounds on each arm while injecting himself with roids. I'm not saying he does steroids. Just saying. Um, eating a fucking couple foot long sandwiches filled with with 12 ounce steaks and protein bars and protein powder and Panera um if you haven't heard the Panera bread story for uh Ryback go look up um I think it was I think it was Daniel Bryan's interview with wrestling with Rosenberg that's another awesome podcast go check that out 
um, wrestling with Rosenberg, one of my favorites. I, I like watching his stuff. He hasn't put anything new out yet, but he's a damn good interviewer. One of my all-time favorite, my favorite wrestling interviewer, um, just because he's so, you know, into the interviews. He's such a fan. Um, Pete Rosenberg, um, cool dude. Go check him out. Um, but there's a Panera story. I'm not going to waste time telling it now, but it, it was definitely hilarious. So <laughs> definitely go check it out. Um, you'll definitely get to see what Ryback is. Um, and uh, his claims of being dumb as fuck, I can definitely... He definitely seems like that kind of guy. Like, he seems like a nice guy, but at the end of the day, he seems like a muscle head. Um, anyway, I'm getting uh, off topic, but, you know, I... You know, he, it put more, it put Ryback over more so than it did Punk. Punk was already over. He didn't need the victory over Ryback. It was just another, you know, place to put him, you know, for the time being. And putting, you know, Ryback in that spotlight with Punk on the on pretty much one of the main event matches, um, you know, made Ryback look better than it did Punk. It made Punk look bad because he wasn't in the actual main event. But I appreciate you, Ryback. I appreciate everything you've done. Um, not buying Ryback's story. Um, then that's just my opinion. If you don't believe what Punk is saying, that's completely up to you. But, you know, hating on the guy because he, quote, walked out on the company is none of your damn business, quite frankly. Um, and, um, oh, another thing that I, that I wanted to touch on because it's really pissed me off was Vince McMahon um, on the Steve Austin podcast. He said a lot of different things. Um, he talked about brass rings. Um, but one thing that stuck out in my mind, because I am a huge Cesaro mark, is his statement on Cesaro. Um, because I know for a fact Steve Austin is huge on Cesaro. He's over on him. He loves Cesaro. And rightfully so. Cesaro is an incredible in-ring talent, one of the best I've ever seen, and I think he has so much potential to be huge. Vince McMahon says he just doesn't have it. How do you expect him to have it when you're constantly changing him from heel to face, when you when you don't know what you want to do with him, you never give him a microphone, you know, this guy on his own was so over, see this is the problem, when a guy gets over, with the crowd, as soon as the WWE gets their grubby little fingers on it, they fuck it up. Every time. There's not one successful wrestler that I can think of that made it with the WWE's help. The Rock made it on his own. He came up with the idea. He did his own thing, and the crowd went with it. Stone Cold, same damn thing. You want to know who else got over without the WWE's help? Without reading from a script? Because that's a big problem, too. They read from scripts. You know who got over big time? I know they mentioned that on the sharpshoot. You know, Aussie and Alec both said um, that, you know, that's a big problem. Was you can't judge whether or, not, whether or not somebody's charismatic on the mic when they're reading word for word what you wrote them to say. If the person writing it isn't charismatic, then it's probably not going to come off charismatic. I can't think of a single person that read line for line what the WWE told them to read that made it as a main eventer. You know who made it as a main eventer almost without reading word for word for what the WWE told them? Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Rock. And I said almost because I was alluding to CM Punk. When he cut that pipe on me, you think somebody wrote that for him? No. Triple H was known for ripping up scripts and throwing them away and saying it was absolute garbage and he was going to do what he wanted to do anyway. It's just they have this preconceived idea that if they if they just keep control on everything, it's going to be all right. But obviously it doesn't work because your company's in the fucking toilet. And you claim TNA is not a, you know, not competition for you. And while I agree with that right now, you keep going down this path they're going to be. And they're not that great of a company. No offense to the people who work there, because they have a lot of talented. They have a lot. Their the depth of talent that that they have there is unimaginable. It's just ridiculous. And they have so much potential. I would love to see them. 
I really, really want to see them survive. Because here's the deal. If they survive, that's competition for the WWE that forces the WWE to get better. And if they don't, they're out. And Vince doesn't want to be out. So he'll do whatever he has to do. What they need is to give Cesaro the reins back. No pun intended to Roman Reigns. Um, although that could be a pretty awesome feud if done right. But, I mean, to say he doesn't have the it factor after you fucked him up personally, or the creative team fucked him up, is just ridiculous. It's bullshit. It pisses me off. It makes me really feel, you know, disgusted with this company. I really don't even want to be a fan anymore at this point. I honestly, truly, deep down in my heart of hearts, just I've been a fan my entire life since I was five years old. I used to, my mother never wanted me to watch wrestling. Oh, that's, that's violent. I don't want my kid to watch. And then I would sneak down into my grandmother's basement. And I would watch pro wrestling in the middle of the night. At five years old. I grew up watching it my entire life. I've always loved it. But after this stuff comes out, after Vince's interview, I really, really just don't want to be a fan anymore. You know, it just pisses me off to the point where they just don't get it. That they are in their own way. That they are fucking all of this stuff up. You know, that they are really ruining these amazing characters. These guys with so much talent have worked their ass off. You know, and I think he said something to the effect of, I don't know, maybe talking about his mic ability. Because that's, I guess, the big issue they're having. Well, when, you, he, when you never give him a mic, how do you know what he sounds like? Maybe, it's, I don't know, maybe because he's, he's, he's Swiss. It's got nothing to do with it. It's just your your idiots backstage don't know what they're doing and don't give him any opportunities. You know, Alex said it on the sharpshoot. You take away his swing move and then you try to sw sell his t-shirt saying King of Swing. That's that's ridiculous. It makes, it just dry. I don't understand it. I really can't understand the ignorance, how they don't see this. I mean, Vince's head must be so far up his ass. I don't, the only explanation. But it just pisses me off because Cesaro is easily one of my all-time favorites. I mean, the guy is so super talented. There's so much could be done with him and they just don't. Ugh, I just don't. Ugh, I don't get it. I don't, I don't understand how they do this. Um, I mean, it's just it's just ridiculous to me, honestly. Um, you know, Punk made a lot of good points. You know, said a lot of great things. Go check out the podcast; it's very, very good. Um, check even check out Vince's, even though he annoyed me, and you know, I didn't really like a lot of the stuff he said. Um, And, you know, I'm even going to call it Stone Cold. As much as I love the guy, he's, he's one of my heroes. Him calling out the locker room saying they need to step it up. I thought that was kind of out of place. I thought that was uncalled for and unnecessary. I think when you work for a company that is so lazy, you know, when you know what is stepping it up? When these guys aren't getting any opportunities, why would you want to try? When you know if you're getting paid next to nothing... And you're breaking your ass. And then you go back to stage to get help on something that you're injured with. And the doctors won't help you. And then you got to take money out of the, the small amount you're getting. Because a lot of these lower card guys get paid next to nothing. And, and you pay for your own airfare. You pay for your own hotels. The WWE does not supply that to you. So if you got to pay and you pay for your own food, they don't supply that to you either. A lot of people don't know that. You pay for all of your own stuff when they're like, oh, these guys are rich. No, the main eventers are rich. John Cena is doing all right. Randy Orton, doing all right. Triple H, sure as hell doing all right. Vince, definitely doing all right. A lot of these lower card guys, they want to make it to the main event because you cannot make it in this business as a low, as a mid card or lower card guy. You just can't. You have to pay for your own board, board and room. You have to pay for all of your own food, your your expenses to fly to wherever you have to go. You have to pay for your you know, they have a WWE doctor, but obviously they don't know what the fuck they're doing. So you have to pay for your own doctor. If you're not going to get any help there, you got to go elsewhere. 
You can't afford it. So a lot of these guys don't are they're just afraid to try. Because you try, you get injured, you don't make it, you're in debt. You can't afford it. And then you're stuck there. Because you can't go elsewhere. What else are you gonna do? You didn't go to college. It's a really, really shitty place to be. Low card and mid card is a terrible place to be, because even the mid card is technically the lower card now. Now the lower card is the even lower card. You know, the mid card is non existent. They don't care about it. They only care about like a select few guys. And that's it. And they wonder why nobody's doing anything. It's it's right there. It's obvious. Um, that's really all I have to say about those two podcasts. I spent pretty much 40 minutes talking about it. I really don't have much more to say um, on the topic. Well, I do, but I don't really want to talk anymore about it. I think you guys have heard enough. I'm sure you're tired of constantly hearing about CM Punk, constantly hearing about Vince. So we're going to leave it at that. If you do have comments on either one of those or both, like I said, leave them for me right here. Um, Facebook, Twitter, wherever you want to contact me, go for it. Um, before I you know, wrap this up, I do want to talk about um, two things. I kind of want to throw two things in there because I think they're pretty cool. Um, one will be... One's really quick, and then the other one I want to go a little in-depth with and get your opinions. The first one um, is, um, and not many of you, many of you may not even care about this. I personally do because I really, really like the guy. Um, Corey Graves from NXT um, is going to be revealing his future um, in the pro wrestling business. Um, he'll be appearing. I actually thought he was fired from the company. Um... I knew that he had an injury, and he had gotten injured, and I know that they were contemplating putting him um, working production or whatever the hell they were going to have him do, um, be a backstage interviewer or whatever the case was. And I thought the decision was to just let him go because, you know, with budget cuts, it wasn't really necessarily worth it to keep him um, if he wasn't going to be able to wrestle. But now he's back. He's going to be on the pre-show of NXT. I don't know if they're calling it Revolution, our Evolution. Stupid fucking name. It really is dumb. Um, but Corey Graves is going to be on the pre-show and he's going to reveal his future in the wrestling business. I'm excited about it. Um, I know a lot of people don't care. I really like Corey Graves. I think he's really good on the mic. I think he's very, very interesting. He's got a different look to him. Um, I think he has a lot of potential um, to be something really, really, to add some diversity to the to the main roster. Um, his wrestling does need some work, um, for sure. And if they can really, you know, dial in his wrestling ability, I think he'll be a real threat on the main roster. Um, so I am personally excited to see him come back. I really do like the guy a lot. Um, but I'm curious to know what you guys think. If you have any opinions on that at all, leave a comment for me. Um, if not, then just ignore this. Um, if you don't even know who Corey Graves is, don't worry about it. Um, you can look it up if you want. Um, but it's, it's really more his promos that I'm interested in. I think they're very real and raw, and I really enjoy them. Um, hopefully he, hopefully his, his, um, his announcement is that he will be making a return, because I think that'd be cool, because I do think he has a lot of potential. and Needs work, but has a lot of potential. All right, moving on because we are we are quickly running out of time. Um, Randy Orton um, supposedly returning at the TLC pay per view. Those are the rumors going around right now, but um, it is being rumored that um, his name is being promoted for the December 29th episode of Monday Night Raw. Um, obviously, the last Monday, uh, I want to say last Monday Night Raw. Um, before the new year, so the last Monday Night Raw of 2014, uh, Randy Orton will be at that Raw. Um, so that that leaves the question, is he going to return at TLC? Is he going to cost Cena or Seth Rollins the match? Um, or will we see him return at a little bit of a later date? I, I want to say he'll return at TLC. I think that... I think that uh, I think it makes sense to have him return at TLC. Um, I just want to look real quick. Um, I want to see 
I'm going to quickly look at a calendar so that I'm not sounding like a complete jackass. Um, so, I want to say it's not this coming up Sunday. I want to say TLC is on the 21st. So, will we see him... Um, Will we see him come back on that TLC? Because it's only saying he's scheduled um, for the 29th. So I don't know right now if that means that's just another date he's going to work after TLC. Or if that's a date he's going to return. Uh, but it'll be interesting. What do you guys think? Do you think he should return at TLC? I'm kind of on, on the uh, fence about it. You know, I, I think that. You know, I, I'm not really interested in seeing Cena versus Seth Rollins um, because I really do feel like it's just going to be putting over Cena more so he can go on and fight Lesnar for the millionth time. Um, so Orton coming in and interrupting it. I don't know. I, I just don't see it being that good. Um, but we'll have to see how they do it. They could work it, and it could, it could be... A good idea it could it could be well done for all I know, um, but I'm I'm just curious what you guys think about that. You know, I really kind of wanted to see Orton return on that Monday when the authority was about to be kicked out. Um, maybe Orton is the anonymous Raw general manager. Ooh, that'd be interesting. Um, crazy raw GM. I kind of hope not because I kind of want to see him more in a wrestling role. I think that would kind of take away. Um, I'm still pulling for Shane O'Mac. I know uh, I think uh, Aussie is too and I know Alec is too. Shane O'Mac coming back would be would be insane. Here comes the money. That'd be awesome. And then that would really kind of work towards bringing the authority back because he could turn heel. I think it's, it's a good idea to do it that way but you know it may not work out. Um but I'm curious to know what you think about Orton. Let me know in the comments. Um, and that's about it. I mean, I kept it close to 40. It's 47 minutes. By the time I'm done wrapping it up, it'll be about 50. So that's 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 that. I Like I said, I pretty much summed it all up as, as best I could, as quick as I possibly could. Um, you know, hopefully you enjoyed this podcast. Um you know, brought to you without any kind of interruptions, you know, no phones going off two, three, four times during the podcast, I mean, come on, what do you expect, I mean, this isn't, it's not like this is a sharpshoot, I don't do that shit here, um, you know, I bring you a quality, quality podcast where all of your questions will be answered, um, so if you have any questions you want to ask, let me know. Um, as always, go to facebook.com slash ropebreakwrestling and like that page up. Do us a solid. Go to twitter.com slash ropebreakwrestling um, and our website, of course, ropebreakwrestling.com for all the latest news and rumors. Um, I, I'll link. I'll put all the links in the description. I always do, so all you got to do is click on the description and click, click the links. It'll be right there for you. You don't even have to remember anything. And then like. Um, and don't forget to subscribe to YouTube either. That we keep up to date on all these awesome podcasts, mainly before the bell, because I know that's your main concern, and rightfully so. It definitely should be. Um, but I know there's something that I'm forgetting. There's something that I always say every single week that I'm forgetting. I know what it is. Oh, I, I can't believe I almost forgot to say this. It's, it, this is one of the most important parts of the show. I say this every single week. Why? Because it's the truth. And you guys need to know. So listen very, very closely. I want you to pay attention because I'm talking directly to you. If you are a fan of RopeBreakWrestling.com, big fan, constantly posting on our Facebook page, constantly commenting, constantly liking our statuses, constantly following us on Twitter. You know, you watch these podcasts sporadically throughout the, throughout the week. Um, and you just really love what we're doing. But you got friends who know and love wrestling but don't know about rope break? I mean, 
For one, you're being a terrible rope breaker. But not telling your friends about, you know, this awesome, awesome place where they can, you know, they can just come and they can converse about pro wrestling with people who truly understand them. No more do they have to talk to somebody about pro wrestling and get that stare that we all know, that disapproving, you watch wrestling, look that every single jabroni who doesn't watch pro wrestling has on their face. Or get that response of, oh, you mean what they wear masks? Because it seems like everybody who watches pro wrestling has this perceived idea that pro of the 80s. And I don't get, there's only like one or two guys right now that wear, or three, that wear masks. And the majority of pro wrestlers don't. So I don't, even in the 80s, I don't know where they get that perception. Um... But no, no longer do they have to sit through that kind of torture. They can talk to people who know about pro wrestling. Hell, you can talk to me. I love to talk to people about pro wrestling. No judgment here. Your opinions are always welcome. I may tell you that your opinion is absolutely garbage. But that just comes with the territory. So the fact that you're not telling them about rope break, you're not inviting them over, not only makes you a bad rope breaker, but in, in sense, it, it makes you a bad friend. And that's not cool. But don't worry, there's an easy, I know what you're thinking, oh my god, oh my god, don't panic, don't panic. Sit down, get a paper bag, in and out, in and out, breathe through the nose, smell the flowers and blow out the candles, take deep breaths, relax, it's going to be okay because I have a remedy and I can fix this, you can fix this, don't panic. All you have to do is tell them to come on over to Rope Break Wrestling, subscribe to our YouTube channel, go to ropebreakwrestling.com bookmark it. That way you'll never miss a single rumor again. Go to facebook.com slash ropebreakwrestling click that like button and go to twitter.com slash ropebreakwrestling click follow and you're done. That is how you fix it. It is that simple. It only takes five minutes give or take. It may even take less than that if you're super quick. I don't know. Maybe you're a computer whiz. I don't know you. Bring your friends over. Rope break is a lifestyle, and if you're not living the rope break lifestyle, then I'm sorry to tell you, you are not really living. And I know what you're thinking. Come on. Come on. You co-own rope break wrestling. Of course you want to talk it up. Of course you want it to do good. Well, yeah, I do. It's because I believe in the brand. And I'm being honest with you guys when I say this. I truly believe in this brand because for us, this is for the fans, by the fans. We want you guys to be as entertained as possible. If you don't like something I'm doing in this podcast, seriously, tell me. Give me constructive criticism. I want to know how I can make this more entertaining for you. I am seriously working. The past couple of days, I've been working um, on getting this podcast uploaded to iTunes, um, and uploaded to um, some sort of RSS feed so that, I, so that you can download this podcast on your phones on the go that way you don't have to open up YouTube because I know it's a pain in the ass and I'm sorry that you guys have to do that um, I hate doing that um, you know it really is a pain in the ass to have to watch something you know it, you know what you know it annoys me when you know I have to go to YouTube and something claims to be a podcast and it's really a video cast and they call themselves a podcast you know it's just ridiculous you're not a podcast you're a video cast. It's, you know, it's false advertising, and truthfully, it's 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 truly lying to their fans, saying that they're a podcast. This is a podcast. Audio is a true podcast. If you can download it on an iPod, it is a podcast. You cannot download the Sharpshoot. You cannot download React on an iPad or an iPod. Therefore, it's not a true podcast. Sorry, that's just a fact. Um, so I'm trying really hard to get this on there for to iTunes. And uh, get it to work for both iPhones and Android devices. That way you can just download it, throw those headphones on, and not worry about draining your battery. See, that's another problem. Um, and I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna necessarily name names, um, but you know, a certain, a certain, and I say podcast lightly because it isn't really a podcast. A certain podcast that also runs out of RopeBreakWrestling.com. Um, See, you know, I I watched I watched the show, I do. It's a good show. I'm not saying it's not a good show, but uh, I I did notice something. 
you know, it, it does, I mean, if, if, you're, if you're okay with your battery constantly draining because you have to have YouTube open and you have to watch the thing, then, then those are the shows for you, obviously. But if you know, like I said, I'm I'm actually working hard to make this easier and more accessible for you. I don't want to drain your battery. I mean, the sharpshoot drains your battery. It's just as cut as dry as that. I didn't want to call it out. And I didn't want to, you know, name names. But that's just the fact of the matter. Is you know, and and we are having a friendly competition. The uh, golden ropes um, within the next week or two will be putting the. Uh, the categories up. You guys can vote. It's completely for the fans, by the fans. Come in, vote, and uh, we will tally them up. And we'll be holding a uh, ceremony. Um, I believe the following Sunday after TLC, we'll be holding the ceremony, and we'll be revealing the uh, the winners of all the all the uh, the categories. One of the categories we added this year is best podcast. And uh, obviously, that's a competition between uh, the Sharpshoot with Aussie, React with Alec, and obviously my show before the bell. Now, I just want to point out, and this is not a jab at either one of those guys, but I just would like to point out that um, the category is labeled Best Podcast. And since mine is actually truly a real podcast, and theirs is a video cast, um, technically. They should be disqualified because they're not truthfully a podcast. But because I am really a nice guy, I'm going to let it slide. I'm going to let them continue to um, be in this race, even though it truly isn't a race because, you know, it hasn't even started. And honestly, I've already won. I mean, if they were smart, they would call it quits. But you know what? If if they if they want to, you know, they want to boast up. Their spirits and they want to—they want to really believe in their hearts and in their minds that they can win. Then bless their little hearts. Come on, let's do this. Um, and that's—that's uh, that's really all I got to say about that. Um, you know, I promote their shows every week because I enjoy their shows. Sharpshoot is one of the best shows on YouTube, um, hands down. Um, you know, after before the bell, um, react. Definitely one of the best shows on YouTube, hands down, um, especially um, when I'm on it. Um, I think that just takes it over the top. And uh, and that that's really all I got to say about that. I mean, there's nothing more I can say. The facts stand for themselves. And uh, that's it. That that's the comp- Let the competition begin. Guys, I'm ready. I'm right here. You want to call me out on your show? That, that's no problem. My show has and always will be better than yours simply because I'm on it. I also would like to point this out too. Um, Aussie said in his podcast, and I say that, like I said, I say that very lightly because it's not technically a podcast, but I'll let him think that. If you want to think it's a podcast, go for it. Cool. Um, he did say that the main difference between Before the Bell and and the sharpshoot is that Aussie isn't on before the bell. And you know what? I agree with him. That is the God's honest truth. That that is the main difference. And that is the actually the reason why before the bell is much better than the sharpshoot. Because he's not on before the bell. Um, and that that's, again, in the words of Dyson Kid, hashtag fact. And there's, you can't change fact. It's just the way it is. I mean, there's no hard feelings. I mean, it's just the way it is. Nothing personal. Um, well, I managed to go pretty much an hour uh, over the limit, even though I said I was going to do 45 minutes. Like I said, I'm a liar. I go, I go off into tangents all the time. It's what I do. This wouldn't be before the bell if I didn't do that. If I didn't get off topic, talk about Walmart. Where other place you're going to find somebody... It's supposed to be a wrestling podcast. I'm over here bad-mouthing Walmart like they owe me fucking money. <laughs> you're not going to find that on the Sharpshoot or, or React. That's why this is the best podcast. And uh, that's the bottom line because Matt Donato said so. This has been Before the Bell, episode number 12. Like I just said, I'm your host, Matt Donato. I will see you once again right back here next week. Same time, same place. Don't be late.
See you guys next week.